are notorious cut-ups. The guy turns around, oh, you know, uh, Hobbs. Uh, you know, and you know, and like this, and they're looking at me, and they're, and they're like, I'm the natural or something. But they didn't really come on to me that day. That, you know, it took. They wanted to see what they got in me. So uh, I go out, and we had an A and a B roster, and I was the only guy on the team that went to the A and the B rosters. They rotated it. So one day, one guy would be in the morning, and then the guy the B roster would come in, in the afternoon. And I think they carry, uh, Lewis, I don't know how big the major league rosters are. I think there's like 23, if I'm not mistaken. 25. Like 25. But 25. They're switching yeah. into 26 at the uh, start of the 2020 season. Yeah. So I go down, and the next thing I know is um, the, um, uh, you know, I, I'm playing catcher. Well, there, there was a guy that was getting all this publicity by the name of J.R. Richard. Mm-hmm. And Jr. had won the Cy Young Award. I knew who he was. And this kid threw close to 100 miles an hour. And I used to have to catch this guy every day in batting practice. And I drove Gates, uh, you know, uh, Gates a little crazy because I would do stupid things like get behind the batting, you know, you know, they had a cage that you did batting practice. And it was so I would stand up and I would throw the ball back to the pitcher. And I was so tall that my hand would get caught in the netting. Because it wasn't, you know, one of those traditional batting cages. It's just one of those things you use for BP. So Gates turns around to me after two days of, you know, he saw me do it a couple of times. And he says, look, big guy, he said, you know, you know, this is, you know, this isn't a game. Just stay on your knee and throw the ball back to the pitcher. I did so many up-downs that I lost <laughs> like 20 pounds in, in a week because it was pretty hot out there. And I was, you know, it was like two-a-days for me. But I got a tremendous amount of, uh, you know, work. And I, I was always the last one to take, you know, I catch all the guys in the A and the B practices, all right, and they divide the roster in half, and then I would uh, get to be the last one to hit, and all the guys would sit there and sit in the dugout and see how I did, because nobody knew who the hell I was. And I, I remember JR was used to throw gas, chin music, and, and I had a, my hand was like an oven mitt, because he, I would come home and my hand, my hand, I had to put my hand in ice. It was so blown up from the, the gas that this guy threw. And I, you know, I already had like two pads in my catcher's glove because I was a catcher in high school. Um, and, uh, you know, I still went through my, through my palm. So I, I, had a, I used to put, put my foot in the bucket uh, because I got hit pretty hard when I was in, in, in high school. Uh, it was the last time I played by a, a kid on my high school team that used to throw yakers. They would fall off the end of the table, and he hit me in the ball sack twice. You know, and so I had a happy, I had a happy uh, left foot. I used to stick, you know, put my foot out instead of putting my foot in towards the uh, the base, you know, to the home plate. So Gates, after watching me bat, turns around and in, in front of everybody, he says, "I right, have this. So you're a professional football player." And all the guys are standing there listening to me, and Petrarch is just busting my chops, and um, he says to me. You ever get hit really hard in pro football, big guy? And I said, yeah. He says, how long does the pain last? I said, I don't know. He said, how long does it last? And I said, a couple seconds. And he goes, well, that's what it's like to get hit with a baseball. And he says, do yourself a favor. Attack the ball with your shoulder and stop putting your, stepping out of the plate and attack it with your shoulder. He says, if you don't get it right, I'm going to cut you now. I don't have time for this. And I was hitting fairly decently, but, you know, I wasn't consistent. Sure enough, the next pitch, JR throws me in the back. And I drop down to one knee, and all the guys are going, holy shit. And what I remember, remember when um, Randy, uh, where's the pitcher, uh, Randy Johnson uh, was, was going up against um, John, was Larry the Walker in the Phillies? No, John Crook. Yeah, 93. John Crook, yeah. Mm, right. it, was, it was like that every day with this guy. Right. And I was scared to death that he was going to kill me. That's how fast this guy was throwing, but he was so heavy set that he couldn't follow through and <laughs> keep the ball low. He actually broke, I think, six no less time. I was forearm the day before, and so I was a nervous wreck. You know, and, I, and he goes, all right, you get up, and I, they're toting six no less time in the hospital, and I had to take my catcher's gear out, and I'm shaking like crazy, and I got a happy foot. So... When I got drilled in the back, all of a sudden I became fearless Fosnick. I, I drove all the way back to Tampa, and I went into my closet, 
And my girlfriend goes, what are you doing? And I turned around and said, where are my shoulder pads? And I had, uh, in, underneath my shoulder pads, I had basically what is a webbed, um, uh, 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 sh- small shoulder pad that the pads the pads underneath the shoulder pads. It's like, you know, like a little harness. And so I take the harness underneath my shoulder pads. And the next day I came to practice. Okay, and I had it underneath my uniform. Okay, and what I did is I had a small pair of shoulder pads that you couldn't really see. It was like half-inch foam. But it was designed to protect my shoulder. After that, I started yakking. I started knocking the crap out of the ball. And I used to do batting practice. I used to utilely put balls in the right-hand seats. Okay, a tinker field. And what was really funny was when I do batting practice, I used to watch Kenny Reed's Tom Petork and some of these guys were Major League Baseball batting champions. And I used to sit there and watch them put seven or eight home runs in the upper deck, okay, of Tinker Field at the right, at the right field because they were lefties. And they used to shoot the ball into right field, and the guys would be sitting there building the upper deck to what is now the Citrus Bowl, okay, and the, and the, you know, the guys would look out, and these guys would be, you know, doing the construction up there, and they, every once in a while, you know, a ball would sail their way, and they would just wave at us. They thought it was funny. Well, I started hitting a ton. So I thought I had the team made. And I played probably about eight or nine games in exhibition games. And I did a little catching. I actually did a little pitching. I played a little first base. played a little third base and a little right field. But one of the reasons why the guys busted my chops is I used to do little crazy stuff. Like, I used to take infield with Kenny Reeds, who was the third baseman with the St. Louis Cardinals. Do you remember him, Lewis? The name escapes me, surprisingly. Yeah. He was <laughs> one of the best players on the St. Louis Cardinals. I think he played with Kurt. Yeah, I remember that. They would hit, they, they would hit batting practice. To, you know, they hit, you know, ground balls to us. And a lot of times, he'd try to, you know, I'd be at third base, and they'd try to hit the ball down the line. And instead of me reaching out with my glove... With my left hand, I would just stab it with my right hand. And the guy stood there, and, and guys that kids, I'd never seen anything like that. He looked at me and went, I'd never seen that. And I, I had a cannon for an arm. I mean, I had a cannon for an arm. So I was able to, you know, at least have enough ability to hang with those guys. What would separate those guys from me was their experience of, you know, calling games behind the plate, shifting, in, you know, infielders and left fielders. And just the little nuances of the game. But it was a blast. So I played for, you know, about three weeks. Uh, we had another week to go before they named the final rosters. And I was getting excited because they were cutting guys. And some of these guys, like they cut J.R. Richard. Uh, they cut two 20-game winners from the Detroit Tigers, whose name's escape me. And here I am sitting here backing up Sal Butera, who was the captain for the Minnesota Twins, and he, you know, they had won the World Series like two years earlier. So I'm sitting here, you know, getting excited, thinking, hey, you know, I might be able to play professional baseball in this league. All right, and the idea behind the league was to, you know, we televise the games. Our top players were making fifteen thousand dollars a month, which is really good money. Um, and you know, it was really good competition. And we'll go through the roster of guys who are in the league in a little bit because a lot of them are household names. Uh, guys like Raleigh Fingers, you know, those types of guys, uh, Jack Billingham, you know, and I played against those guys, and it was fun. So next thing I know, um, I get called in the office, and Gates goes, we're going to release you. And he said, well, you did a really good job. And he says, I said, okay, and, he, and he, they replaced me with Bruce Boshi. Hmm. Bruce Boshi was the catcher for the, the Los Angeles Dodgers, and he uh, had just retired. So he came in and backed up Sal Butera and wound up being the catcher for the backup catcher for the um, Orlando Juice. So I came home, but I had a blast, and I still have my Orlando Juice hat. But I, I thought that I just throw that in there because I was thinking the other day about the '80s, and I was thinking about how exciting it was to have cable television. Okay, and some of the opportunities that came up, like the USFL uh, with ESPN, and then. Uh, you know, the senior professional golf, you know, circuit, and then senior professional baseball league. The league only lasted a year and a half. 
Uh, but the first year was pretty good. The St. Petersburg Pelicans won the title. Uh, and it was, you know, a very competitive league. And I like to think that these were major league expansion teams. The only difference was the pitching. Uh, because the guys were over 35 years of age, some of these guys' arms had gone. Uh, but, you know, it, I, I just, you know, thought the, the, that as we're thinking about Kurt Flood, you know, I had to throw that in there because there's something I've long forgotten about, but it was so much fun uh, to play in the league. Uh, and, you know, and get a chance to play Major League Baseball. And, you know, so I've been in a little bit of an anomaly, but I always follow baseball because I learned a lot from those major leaguers. And they are, you know, they'll break your chops. But trust me when I tell you. All right, let but me. Gates was an unbelievable manager. All right, let me uh, say a few things here, Bill, okay? First of sure. all, another lifetime ago, yours truly, me, was a catcher in minor league baseball growing up as a kid. And I actually caught for three or four years and won a championship on a, a team that went 21-0. and 0. And I'll tell you what, I used to go ahead and warm up my pitchers during innings. And I, I, I love catching because, for me, I was always in the game. If I were in any other position but catching, I, my concentration would be long gone, as Ernie Harwell would say, in the oars of broadcasting. And, you know, I, I like uh, catching because I was always in the game and that's why a lot of catchers tend to make good managers mm -hmm. so I can appreciate you know what you were talking about you know being behind the plate you know and been there done that Bill so glad you had a chance to share, share that story with me I brought back a lot of memories of my own being a catcher my, myself where did you catch at? where did I catch at? that I was uh yeah. Uh, in uh, Southfield, Michigan, you know, I, I'm talking about when I was in like uh, between 10 and 12 years old, Little League, man. Okay, yeah, I loved right. it. I well, loved it. It's the it. same thing. And once, once a catcher, always a catcher. You right. I mean? Yeah, you always have. Uh, I, I, first of all, Bill, I remember I framed pitches really well. I used to love to get in the umpire's head and say, you know, that was a little bit wide. You're like you're going to throw a 10, 12-year-old kid out anyways. Seriously? No. Okay, but I used to go ahead and distract the umpires to get calls for my pitchers. And I was only 10 to 12 years old. I knew the game back then. I certainly never realized I'd be broadcasting it or do it, uh, having a microphone for sure. But, yeah, you know, it was pretty fun. So when you talk about some of your experiences standing behind the plate catching, I used to uh, take foul balls where the sun doesn't shine. My dad owned a sporting goods store back then, and there were plenty of those – things called cups out there to protect me where the sun doesn't shine, you know, that kind of thing. So, yeah, you know, they always appreciate well, the position. And some of my best interviews uh, have been with catchers, although i got to say I've interviewed a lot of great people during the course of my 40 years, 40-plus years in the media for sure. So I'm glad you had a chance to bring up this story about you catching. Gates Brown was a guy who uh, obviously played on the Detroit Tigers, a team that I'm so close to. You know, growing up with uh, Lewis, you want to add something real quick before well, I complete my story? Well, yeah, wasn't Gates Brown like a renowned like pinch hitter? Well, like, yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah he's yes. one of the all-time uh, best pinch hitters to play the game. So that was his role, Gates. and he was also a hitting coach. Hold on, Bill. Okay, he used to be the hitting coach of the Tigers for many years, and was also, I believe, a coach on the '84 World Series mm -hmm. Tigers as well. So yeah, pinch hitting was his game. And, then, and obviously that's what his role was. So so when you appreciate pitch hitters, okay, Gates Brown was indeed at the top of his craft. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, both of you guys. Gates, Gates would have been a great middle linebacker in football. I mean, he had that kind of mentality. The thing I remember about him, he was built like a fire hydrant. Right. And he had so much torque. And, he, you know, he worked with me a couple times after practice. He'd get in the cage, and he would crank them out. He would crank him out, and he, you know, and so he, he taught me how to attack the ball with my shoulder. I'll, I'll tell you one thing better. See, the thing that I had, I was 285. I was like a defensive end playing baseball, and I was surprised that a lot of these baseball players are really good athletes, but they're a different kind of athlete. They're great guessers. Uh, Tom Petroik was a great, you know, uh, a great, foot, you know, I think he was a football player as well, played ball at the University of Houston. But some of the guys were kind of tall. But I was surprised. A lot of the guys were just, you know, good athletes, but not real big. All right, but uh, they, you know, you could see how hard it was to hit in major league baseball with these guys sprinkled through the infield and in the outfield, and they covered some ground. So.